Hey, Shalom. Most high in Christ bless you. You're listening to Prophesying to the Wind Reloaded. I'm Officer Simakaya. Officer Hosea. Soldier Judah. Soldier Gabriel. So as you all know, we've been dealing with the topic, fixing the broken black community. That's the episodes. So today we're going to deal with Halloween, the wickedness of Halloween and how Coming out of that custom, that, that ungodly custom is going to fix the broken black community. So we're going to start off in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. This is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So we all know we all got, we all got a body, we all got physical skin, we all have, we walking in this world. But the scriptures is very clear. We don't, even though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. The battle that we in is spiritual. Read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And right now, the stronghold that we are going to be dealing with is Halloween. Halloween is a stronghold that's, that plagues the hearts and mind of our people. It's a, it's a sad thing that Halloween is one of the, 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 the nations make. Billions of dollars off our people going and buying candy to go trick-or-treating and doing these various things that when you look in the Bible, it's nowhere in there. It's nowhere in there. That's why I say it's the, our, our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. So we're going to pull down those strongholds with the Bible. With the Bible. Read. Casting <clears throat> down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. Halloween is a wicked imagination that will be cast down by this Bible. Read. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So any, it, in addition to casting down the thought, the thought processes of Halloween, we're going to cast down everything that, that comes, comes against the word of God. Because it's our job as the prophets of God to cast down the wicked inventions of this world that have led our, led our, that have, that, that have led our people astray. These things have been set up to keep us, to keep us at the bottom. And we willingly go along with it, even after it's brought out clearly and plainly that the, the customs are go against the Bible. Many of our people that say they believe in the Bible still go on with it, talking about it's for the kids, and we just we just having fun. It's the kid, the games, and all of that. No, it's against the word of God. Read and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So what we're going to do, bring, bring all of these thoughts, all of these things, Halloween, you got Thanksgiving coming up in, in, in the next month. You got Christmas. All of these things are going to be brought down. We're going to bring your focus back to the word of God, showing you that these things are not of God and you need to come up out of them. These are, these are the ways that you're going to fix the broken black community. The most high God is going to stop judging the black community when we come up out of these wicked inventions. We come up out of this idolatry. We come out of these pagan holidays. Read. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your, or when your obedience is fulfilled. So as, as your obedience is fulfilled, then you're going to join us. And we, we, we don't celebrate Halloween. That's why we're able to tell you that it's wicked, that you need to come up out of it. We have the right to judge your actions because we not keeping it. So we ready to revenge your disobedience against the word, the word of God. It's Colossians chapter 2. You got to read, Halloween has nothing. You, you, you do not find Halloween in the Bible. The Bible is the book of life. But Halloween is a celebration of the dead. It's the acknowledgement of, of dead. It's the, it, where you, when you, when we go on, we're going to go into the articles a little later, but it talk about that they had they had a belief that on oh, October 31st is when the the portal to uh, the dead the spirits that's dead they able to come back into the world and then it precedes all saints day and all this foolishness but that's nowhere in the bible read what you got the book of colossians chapter 2 and verse 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So it lets you know, Halloween is a, philo is a, a vain, is a philosophy of this world. And that philosophy basically, in layman terms, what it's talking about is worldly knowledge. Worldly knowledge. The philosophy of this world is worldly knowledge. And it says vain deceit. This is any thought that's just like we just read. 
any thought that's lifted up above the word of God. Halloween, the customs of Halloween, the things that we do on Halloween, it goes against the word of God. And that's what we are here to tell you. And then it says the rudiment after the rudiments of, of men. Of the, of the world. Let's read of the rudiments of the world. The rudiments of the world. Let's read that definition. Bring it down, son. You gotta bring it, yeah. Rudiment. Definition of rudiment. A basic principle or element or a fundamental skill, usually used in plural. So the rudiments of the world, so it says after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. So you follow on Halloween is a basic principle or element or fundamental skill that you learn from the world. You didn't learn it from God. But it says it's not after Christ. And what we are here to tell you, we are here to bring you back in alignment to the Most High God, to Christ. Get Hebrews chapter 5 and 12. Because many of you, many of you have been in, Christi in Christianity all your life, had the Bible on your bookshelf, the Bible on your, your dashboard, all of those things. But you, you, the thing, one thing you're missing, you have missed out on the application of the word of God. And that's why you don't know that you're not supposed to be celebrating Halloween. The most high God don't care about you saying this for the kids. He wants you to do what his, what his, word, what his word says. Read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 5 and verse 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers... Ye have need that one teach you again. So it says, for when the time ye ought to be teachers, you ought to be teachers. You've, you've been, you've been so-called in the Bible all your life. You should be a teacher. You come of age, you're supposed to be teaching God's laws. But no, you haven't been because you've been following after the rudiments of the world. You've been following after the philosophies and vain deceits of the world. You've been, you've been celebrating Halloween, Easter, Christmas. You've been celebrating all the holidays that the world has set up. But you refuse to do what the Bible say. So you had, it says you have need that one teach you again. That's why we are here. That's why we're here going over Halloween. Because you need to be taught once again the truth of the God or the word of God. Read. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. So you have to be taught the first principles of the word of God. Not the principles of the world because you've been doing that all your life. You've been doing it all your life and neglecting to do what you did, neglecting to read your Bible for one and neglecting to apply what it say to do. Read. And I become such as have need of milk and not of strong drink, of strong meat. You need to be retaught God's laws. You need to be retaught instructions on how you're supposed to live your life. And that's why we are doing this show, to show you that Halloween is not of God. It has nothing to do with God. And he's not pleased with you doing it for the kids, doing it just so you can get some candy. No, he's not pleased with that. Read. Verse 13. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So you, you are, you're not even a babe because you're not applying the commandments. You are still doing, following out the worldly customs. You, you've, been in, you, you've been in Christianity all your life. You claim to love God. You claim to know God, but yet you celebrate celebrating Halloween. Some of you know, some of you don't know. Halloween is a pagan holiday that has nothing to do with God, absolutely nothing. So that's what we're here to tell you. Bring up that, um, that article, The True Discipleship. The article on the, the, the true discipleship, the dark side of Halloween. Because we're gonna go into we're gonna go into the the history of where Halloween stems from. Read that. This is the dark side of Halloween. Excited children masquerading as witches, pirates, devils, ghosts, Dracula, and other creatures bounding through the neighborhood, going from door to door, shouting, trick or treat. The party at school or a friend's house where they tell ghost stories. Bob for apples or tell fortunes the visit to the to the community. Haunted house and homes decorated with witches. Skeletons and eerie looking grinning jack jack o lanterns So real quick, so we all familiar with jack we or not jack o lanterns We all familiar with haunted house. The haunted house. It's a a, a house, an old house, an old abandoned building that's set up for you to go in there. And you got all these skeletons jumping out. You got all these scary things that's jumping at you. That lets you know right then and there that that's not a God. 
That's not of the Most High God. Get 2 Timothy chapter 1 and 7 real quick. That's not a God because you, when you take your children, you take you, when you even go as an adult, you take your children to these places, what you instilling in them is fear. You instilling in your children fear. And that's not, that's, not, that's not the spirit that the Most High God gave the Israelites, the black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read that. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Read that again. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. The Most High God did not give us a spirit of fear. So why would you take your children to a haunted house to instill in them fear? You got these big, big spider webs with these uh, eight foot looking spiders jumping out. You got all this, all these things that you putting in, your, in the mind of your children. So then now they're afraid of the dark. Now they're afraid of various things. You putting fear in your children. Read, finish that off. But of power and of love. And of a sound mind. The most high God made us, he gave us dominion. When you read back in Genesis, he gave us dominion over everything, every creature over the earth. So if we got dominion, that ain't no fear in having dominion. When you walking in dominion, you don't fear nothing. You don't fear spirits and, and, and goblins and ghouls. Right. That's not of the most high God. You got something you want to bring up? Uh, what, what I wanted to say with that was also... When you touched on Colossians 2 and 8, that fear, that's going into you spoiling your children with the philosophies, the philosophies of men in vain deceit. Yep. Because we all know that Halloween is just, like you said in the article uh, that it's going to touch on, uh, it's just a means for this nation to make billions of dollars. Yep. So with them making billions of dollars, that's the philosophies and the rudiments of this world. So what 2 Timothy is bringing in, that fear is pretty much a, a tool for this nation to continuously make money to keep our children and keep us in sin. Yep, and then, uh, then going back to that article also, it says, excited children masquerading as witches, pirates, devils, ghosts, Dracula, and other creatures bounding through the neighborhood, going from door to door shouting, trick or treat. So this letting you know that you you having your children dress up as witches, pirates, devils, ghosts, and it's just a small list. You got the, when you got the children dressing up as superheroes and and all these various things, Murder. but then you also you said what murderers, murderers. Uh, what you got? Uh, what's the name of the, what's the Michael Myers uh, going Frank through? Um, I think they got a new movie coming up with Michael Myers or something like that. Okay. But all of that, all of these, all of those things, I to instill fear. You got your Jasons, uh, Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger. I think Freddy Krueger was based in Hollywood. I don't know. I, I've been in so long. I looked at it. But all of these things I designed and set up to keep us on the bottom, plain and simple. But then they go into they dressing up as witches, pirates, devils. When you get to adults, you have these parties that go on where our women are dressing in these skimpy uh, nurse outfits and things like that, get uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 9. 1 Timothy 2 and 9. Because a lot, all of the, it, everything about Halloween has nothing to do with the Most High God. It's directing you away from the Word of God. It's directing you away from what the Scriptures instruct you to do as a man or a woman. Read that. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also, that women... Adorn themselves in modest apparel. Women are to adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest means you're covered up. You're not showing off your, 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 your goods to anybody that's not your husband. Nobody should see your breasts. Nobody should see your camel toe. Nobody should see your butt, your legs, your stomach. None of that. It says women are to be adorned. They're supposed to wear modest apparel. But when you look at Halloween... You got all these, these Halloween parties going on. Our women half dressed, half naked. You got women dressing like men, men dressing like women. All of those things go against the word of God. Go to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and 5. All these things go against, leads you against the commandments of God, meaning that you are in the midst of sin. And sin is the transgression of God's laws. It ain't no game. The Most High God is not pleased with, with it. That's not having fun in the Most High God's sight. He's not pleased with it. He's not pleased with your behavior. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. 
The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. What, what does a woman wear that pertains to men? Pants. So the Most High God is not pleased with you dressing up like, uh, even you got women that dress up like Dracula. The women, women, you're not supposed to wear pants. You cross-dressing. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Women, you had men dressing up like women, putting on dresses, putting on skirts, panties, all of that, all of those. It, that's against the Most High God. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So when you do these things, when you participate in Halloween, you, you celebrating this wicked holiday, you putting on these costumes, costumes, cross-dressing, doing these various things, you are an abomination to the Most High God, meaning that you will be put to death because your actions are disgusting to the Most High God. That's what abomination means, that when he see you, it, it, it make him want to throw up. Like you see that, uh, like you see something that's disgusting to you and it just make your stomach turn. That's how the Most High God view you when you cross-dressing. You, you sisters that's half, that's dressing half naked. That's an abomination to the Most High God. You got something? Yeah. Uh, I, like, I, our people really don't understand how evil Halloween is and how God hates it. Uh, you just touched on abomination. Can you get a uh, Revelation 21 and 8 for me real quick? Because Halloween is definitely an abomination to God, and he hates that. Because it goes into so many so many uh, avenues of idolatry. And that's what Halloween is really is. It's idolatry. Read that for me. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving. Now, we said that Halloween puts a spirit of fear on your children. So guess what? You're leading your children to condemnation. Read it again. But the fearful and unbelieving. And what you're teaching them Halloween, now they're what? They're not believers of God. Why? Because they're celebrating idolatry. Read on. And the abominable. And the who? The abominable. So now that you're doing these dressing in these different characters, some of you are going to dress your sons up as fairies, as, as in women's uh, young ladies' garments, as princesses things of that nature. You're going to have your daughters dressed up as men. Those things are abominable. Read on. And murderers. And murderers. You're going to dress some of your children, what, as Dracula? You're going to dress up some of your children as Michael Myers, Freddy? Those are murderers. Those are putting fearful, unbelieving spirits on your children. Read on. And whoremongers. And whoremongers. Some of you are going to dress your daughters up as Marilyn Monroe. You're going to dress your daughters up as what? Betty Boo, Nicki Minaj, all these different characters that put spirits and fearful, unbelieving spirits on your children. Read. And sorcerers. Sorcerers. That's going into witchcraft. Read. And idolaters. And idolaters. That's another God that you're serving other than the Most High God, the one true God, the black God. Read. And all liars. And all liars. Read. Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. And what is that? Which is the second Death. So we all know that we're all going to die. But this is talking about what? Forever death, eternal death. And that's what you're leading your children into. So we got to come up out of this custom. That's why we are trying to fix back the broken black community by letting our people know that these customs that we are raising our children up in, the slave religion, basically, because Halloween is a, is an extension of Christianity. We have to come back out of that to fix our communities. So exactly. So what we did get Zephaniah one and eight go to go right along with that. Because what you what you don't realize is that by you you dressing up as witches, pirates, warlocks, all of those things go against the Bible. And when you dress like that, when you dress like that, that's that's called the most high God call it strange apparel. Let's see what the most high God gonna do to those that dress in strange apparel. Read that. The book of Zephaniah, chapter one and verse eight. And it shall come to pass. <clears throat> In the day of the Lord's sacrifice, that I will punish the princes and the king's children. So, real quick, it says the day of the Lord's sacrifice. The day of the Lord's sacrifice is when the Most High God come and judge this earth. He's going to judge the nations for, for uh, having us in captivity. And he's going to judge the Israelites, the black, Hispanic, and Native Americans that are not keeping his commandments. You're going to be consumed. That's the day of the Lord's sacrifice. 
Because when you, when you think of the word sacrifice, something has to die. The day of the Lord's sacrifice is when he come and bring judgment to this earth. Read. That I will punish the princes and the king's children uh -huh. and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So you, you willingly and knowingly, even after you hear this word that Halloween is wicked and you still go forth and do it, you will be punished by the Most High God when he come and judge this earth. You're going to be punished because you're, you, you're teaching your children to dress in strange apparel as you're doing the same thing. Was that it on that? Yes, sir. So go from there, go, to, um, go back to that article. I think we stopped in the Jack middle. Jack-o'-lanterns. Uh, let me go. Jack-o'-lantern. It must be Halloween. Sounds like harmless fun, doesn't it? But there is the dark side to Halloween you should know about. A side that I never liked because it was associated with evil, the devil, fear, death, and violence. That side of Halloween always gave me the creeps. And that's the crazy thing about it. And then, and then a lot of times what you see with a lot of these movies, they, they, use, the moon, they use the full moon to assist in their wickedness. They make the full moon, like you see in the image, go pull that article back up. You see in the image, you see a, you often in all, a lot of these movies, you see a witch flying across the, the full moon. When the full moon, when, we, when the, full, the full moon is the new moon, which, which dictates the new month, and it's used as a sign to the world, but they, it's always painted in a bad light. You, gotta, you always got to, the movies, they always got a witch on the full moon is when they, 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 they at the height of their wickedness. They do the most wicked things. Yeah, or a werewolf. Or oh, yeah, werewolves. Uh, it it just everything is it goes against the Bible. And the most of you know, most of you actually know that it ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. But you do it anyway, just like the the guy said in the article. What go up, go up a little bit on the article. In the article, he say, uh, "Sounds like harmless fun, doesn't?" It? A lot of you got that in your mind. No, it's not harmless fun. You don't realize that the Most High gonna judge you. For having your harmless fun that right. you so you so to think. Read on. And after a thorough study of Halloween, I know why I felt that way because beneath Halloween's candy coating is a history of diabolical evil. It's a history of diabolical evil. It's evident. It's evident this is diabolical. Anything that's instilling fear in you and fit instilling terror. And then on Halloween, and just to name it, I remember growing up every year. During Halloween, when I was uh, when I was younger, it was always we was running from um, home. You had homie the clown riding around in a white um, uh, riding around in a white cargo van, snatching up kids. We see a white van, we running. Halloween, it, it, uh, you you have a whole lot of kidnappings that go, a whole lot of evil that go on. But yet you think that it's it's for the kids, and that's why nowadays they do it. They do their little trick or treating. Before the sun go down, they have a time. They have a time schedule that just lets you know that it is it's wicked and evil because it's so much evil that goes on on that day. As soon as the sun set, you got you got you got the young men. They out there throwing eggs at cars, have paintball guns, shooting paintball guns, putting yeah. They put people put stuff in the candy. Like now nowadays, the trick or treat is the trick is they put some they put something in your candy so they do, you get home. The parent got to test test all the candy and look at it. That lets you know it's evil. It's evil and wicked, but our people, we, we, don't, we don't like to, to, to listen to instruction and discipline. Go back to the article. In a moment, I will share with you some of my findings related to the dark side of Halloween. I will share with you briefly three things. The history of Halloween, the heroes of Halloween, the harm of Halloween. Go ahead. The history of Halloween. Halloween is a religious day. But it is not a Christian day. So just real quick, uh, I didn't write this down. Let me uh, get it. Get for, I think it's First Maccabees because it says Halloween is a religious day, but it is not a Christian day. What is our religion as the Israelites? What is our religion? Because even that, and even that, yeah, this person is writing this article against Halloween. But even that is not a. It's a, it's, it's a religious day, as you look at it in today's term, in modern terms, but. According to the Bible, no, this is not a religious day. Uh, let me see. This is first, first or second Maccabees chapter three. 
Yeah. First Maccabees, let me see, let me get it. I didn't have this written down. Uh, it's first Maccabees. It's chapter two. Uh, where is that? Chapter two and verse I got it. Verse 19. 19. Start at 19. The book of first Maccabees, chapter two, verse 19. Then Mattathias answered and spake with a loud voice. No, nah, you know what? Start at 18. Verse 18. Now, therefore, come thou first and fulfill the king's commandment, like as all the heathen have done. Yea, and the men of Judah also, and such as remain at Jerusalem. So this is letting you know that the nations always had this thought process. Follow, follow what we tell you to do, but don't do what, you, don't do what your God tell you to do. That's what this is saying. Follow the, fulfill the king's commandment. That's what this world is set up. That's what Halloween is set up. Thanksgiving. They want you to, they want you to follow after the, the religions and the, follow, the, the, the holidays of this land that we living in. America. They want you to follow after what America put in place, what Europe put in place, what the so-called white man has put in place. But no, that goes against the Bible, and we're going to see how our forefathers felt. Read. So shall thou and thy house be in the number of the king's friends, and thou and thy children shall be honored with silver and gold. Basically saying, if you, if you do what we say do, you follow after our customs, our holidays, our traditions, hey, we're going to take care of you. We're going to give you silver and gold. You're going to be good. We ain't going to mess with you. But let's see what our forefathers had. And it's the same mindset that we have to have. And remember what I'm dealing with, because it says Halloween is a religious day in that, in that article. Read. And many rewards. Then Mattathias answered his fate with a loud voice. Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him, and fall away, every one from the religion of their fathers, and give consent to his commandments. So, it's, so Mattathias said, even though all the nations gonna, gonna give they, they religion away, or the religion of their fathers, they cast to the side to follow the king's command, what are we gonna do? Yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers. He says, me and my sons, we gonna walk in the covenant of our fathers the religion of our fathers. And let's see what that religion is that the Bible tells us to follow after, the religious, the religious actions of the Bible. Read. God forbid that we should forsake the law and the ordinances. Uh-huh. We will not hearken to the king's words to go from our religion, either on the right hand or the left. So if when you examine the Bible, Halloween is not a religious day. We have religious, we have, according to the Bible definition of religion, of the laws and the commandments, the ordinances of God, the religious days of God is Passover, Pentecost, um, Tabernacle. tabernacles, the Day of Atonement, new moon. the Feast of Dedication, the New Moons, the Sabbath Day. Those are religious days. Halloween ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. It's not a religious day. And it's not a Christian day. And, and, and also, too, uh, not only is, is those days that we're supposed to commemorate, but the men, our forefathers. I'm, I, you know, we're supposed to remember our forefathers such as Abraham, David, uh, the Maccabees. Those are the men that we're supposed to aspire to, to be like, not Dracula and Nicki Minaj and all these other characters that Halloween like to put forth on our children. So our religions is going into having the images of our forefathers and our foremothers to emulate what they were about keeping these religious hol holiday practices such as uh, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, the Passover, things of that nature. So our forefathers and our foremothers, they left uh, an example for us to keep, not Halloween. So uh, read on. Halloween is a religious day but it is not a Christian day. Tom Sanginet, former high priest in the Celtic tradition of Wicca witchcraft, said the modern holiday we call Halloween has its origins in the full moon closest to November 1st. See, there you go. They, 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 they try to tie the full moon in with the wickedness. And, and it had the full moon and the, the, the creation of God ain't got nothing to do with wickedness, but they tie it to wickedness. Read. The witches' new year. It was a time when the spirits, demons, 
were supposed to be at their peak power and revisiting the Earth planet. He went on to say Halloween is purely and absolutely evil, and there is nothing we ever have or will do that will make it acceptable to the Lord Jesus. So that statement is true. The black, the, 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 the let's see, it says Halloween is purely and absolutely evil, and there is nothing we ever have or will do that will make it acceptable to the Lord Jesus, the black Messiah. Emphasis added on our part. That's true. Now, I want to jump back up. It says, Tom Sanguinet, former high priest in the Celtic religion, Celtic tradition of Wicca, which is witchcraft, said. So, Wicca. Pull up that, um, that uh, Wikipedia article on Wicca. Because we're going we gonna to deal with what they say. Because even, even Tom Sanguinet, Wicca is not in the Bible. It has nothing to do with the Bible. The Bible speaks against witchcraft. But yet again, it's, it's, still, some, it's still things that our, our people don't know. We, we are ignorant. Some of us know, and it's sad, and we still continue in it. So uh, let's read that. This is the definition of Wicca. Well, not definition, but Wicca. Is a modern pagan religion. Scholars of religion category, categorize it as both a new religious movement and as part of the occultist stream of Western, what they say, esotericism. My bad. It was developed in England during the first half of the 20th century and was introduced to the public in 1954 by Gerald Gardner, a retired British civil servant. Wicca draws upon a diverse set of ancient pagan and 20th century hermetic motives for the theological structure and ritual practices. Wicca has no central authority. So jump, jump down to where it says definition and terminology. Because we're not going to read through this whole thing. I just wanted to point out what, what Wicca is and a little bit of the history. No, uh, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Uh, definition and terminology. Scholars of religious studies classify Wicca as a new religious movement and more specifically as a form of modern paganism. Cited as the largest, best known, most influential, and most extensively academically studied form of paganism. Within the movement, it has been identified as sitting on the former end of the ecl eclectic to reconstructionist spectrum. So so like I said, we're not going to go through all of this, but this is just to show out. This is, the, this is reading this is just to show you that he, this, this, is, this is the enemy speaking against the enemy. This is somebody, this is paganism speaking against paganism. Get uh, Psalms chapter 64 and 8. What, you see something? Yeah, the however part. It says, read on, read on. However, given that Wicca also incorporates the practice of magic. Several scholars have referred to it as a magical religion. So that lets you know that, so in the, we go back to that, the dark side of Halloween article. It says, uh, where we at? Tom Sanguinet, former high priest in the Celtic tradition of Wicca. So he's in a, so the tradition of Wicca is paganism. And then he jumped to the end of that paragraph. He said he went on to say Halloween is purely and absolutely evil. You in evil, and you're speaking against something else that's evil, even though what he's saying is true about Halloween. But Wicca is evil in Halloween. That, the, that lets you know these people, ain't, they, these people ain't about us. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, it's time for you to return to your God, return to the Bible, because it's evident that, so what? So what he telling you? So he's speaking against Halloween, and he gonna tell you to come to Wicca, to witchcraft. The, 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 read that in Psalms, Psalm sixty four and eight. The Book of Psalms, chapter sixty four, verse eight. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. So it says they shall make their own tongue fall amongst themselves. You see in this article, they expose their own self. And then they, they expose themselves and then cover you, send you into another line of paganism. That, that makes no sense. They let you, that Halloween is evil and wicked, and 
and Wicca is evil and wicked. It's all witchcraft. They both the same thing. Halloween is a level of witchcraft, and then you got somebody that was a high priest in the Celtic religion of witchcraft saying that Halloween was evil. That don't make that don't make no sense. Get that. Get what you show fourteen and four. It make that makes no sense. But yet our people will still say, "Oh no, I'll just do it to get the candy for the kids." Oh no, it's just I'm just having a little fun. God don't mind me having a little fun. No, He do mind you. He He do mind. He's not pleased with it. Read that. The book of Job, chapter fourteen and verse four. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. So you can't bring something clean out of something unclean. Wicca is unclean. Halloween is unclean. You can't, it ain't nothing, you can't bring nothing good out of either one of them. By him speaking against it, he's going to say that, oh, well, and then it's it's, 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 it's crazy and retarded because it's a, he's a high priest in the Celtic tradition of Wicca. But then he say, at the end, he say, he went on to say, Halloween is purely and absolutely evil, and there is nothing we ever have or will do that will make it acceptable to the Lord Jesus. So you're saying that being a high priest of Wicca is, is good? Huh? Yeah, go ahead. So what you're saying is you can't turn witchcraft into harmless fun. That's what the scripture is saying. Exactly. Exactly. So let's go back to that. Let's go back to that article. Uh, okay, back in the history of Halloween. Uh, what is what is the man? Okay. Well, let me see. Oh, what is the man talking about? You might be asking yourself. Let me explain. The origin of Halloween is the Celtic festival of Samhain, Lord of Death and Evil Spirits, long before Christ, at least two thousand years. Druids in Britain, Ireland, Scotland. France, Germany, and other Celtic countries observed the end of summer by making sacrifices to Samhain. So the festival, so Halloween stems from the Celtic festival of Saint Samhain. I think they say it's pronounced like Samhain or something like that. Uh, it says Lord of Death and Evil Spirits. So if you don't know, now you know. You celebrating Halloween, you are, you are worshiping the Lord of death and evil spirits goes completely against the Bible. Get Baruch chapter 4 and 1. Baruch chapter 4 and 1. This is the book of Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. All so, the, they so the Bible is the book of the commandments of God. So what you're supposed to be following is, is the commandments of God. Halloween ain't in there. Read. All they that keep it shall come to life. So when you keep the commandments, you're going to come to life. Not death, but to life. So following after Halloween, that's what you're going to get. It says the festival of the same kind, the Lord of death and evil spirits. You follow after it, that's what's going to follow you. You're going to get death and you're going to have an evil spirit on you. But if you follow the commandments, you're going to come to life. Read. But such as leave it shall die. Such as leave it shall die. When you celebrate Halloween, you, you follow after the things of this world, the rudiments of this world that's not after Christ, you're going to die. You're going to die. And that's what Halloween got written all over it. Read back to the uh, article. The Celts considered November 1st as being the day of death. Because the leaves were falling. It was getting darker sooner and temperatures were dropping. So even in that, they said the Celts considered November 1st as being the day of death because the leaves were falling. That's, that's the seasons that the most high set up. Had when, it, when the fall come and get colder, the leaves fall off the tree. The tree ain't dead. Right. It's just the leaves are just... Um, they falling off because the tree is going into a, a, a dormant. But they attribute it to death. That's a perversion of the Most High. That's a perver that's a perversion of the, the creation of the Most High God. That has nothing to do with the Most High. Read on. They believed Mak Allah, their sun God, was losing strength, and salmon 
Lord of death, was overpowering him. So Fur read that, read that part again. They believe Muk Allah, their sun god, was losing strength, and Salmon, the Lord of Death, was overpowering him. That 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 ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. They said the Lord, the Lord of Death was overpowering. Where is that? Where you at? Let me see. Uh, right there. The leaves are falling. They believe Muk Ola, their sun god, was losing strength. And same hind, the Lord of Death was overpowering him. That sounds just like what they teach in Christianity, that the devil rose up and fought against God and, and God cast him to the earth. <laughs> that sounds like the same BS. That's not biblical. Even if you just 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 thinking carnal for a, a moment. When you look at the sun, the sun don't lose its strength. The sun it 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 orbits around the earth. It, go, it goes up, come down. The clouds, when it's cloudy, they may block the sun, but the sun don't lose its strength. That's evil. That's evil. That, you're, taking the, you're, taking, you're taking the creation of God and attributing it to false gods. You're attributing it to false gods. So with that, go to, because um, it says, the same high as the Lord of death. Go to Matthew chapter 22 and 31. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 31. This is the book of Matthew chapter 22, verse 31. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. So notice the God, the Most High God said he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is spoken in present tense. Read. God is not the God of the dead. He's not the God of the dead. When you keep these commandments and you die on this physical body, you're not dead. You sleep. You're at rest. That's why I say he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of the living. Read. But of the living. Uh-huh. That's it? Yes, sir. So from there, go to, um, go to Romans... Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, and start at verse, go to the start of verse 20. The book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 20. For the invisible things of him. From the creation of the world are clearly seen. So the, 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 the most high God is clearly seen by the creation. When you look at the, the trees, the, the moon, the stars, when you look at all the creation, even us, our bodies, when you look at the creation, it's evident that it's, that, that it's a God that created us, a God that created us in his image. It's evident and clear. It's plain as day. It ain't no uh, big boom or big bang theory. Ain't none of that. It's clear that the Most High God created us. It's evident and clearly seen. Read. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Uh-huh. Because that, when they, knew, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And that's where you see all of these idolatrous holidays, all of these, all these things that attribute us to following after idolatry is because we refuse to acknowledge the God that we serve. We refuse to acknowledge the God of the Bible, his commandments. Now jump up to, uh, what was the, the verse that you had? Uh, verse 25. Yep, jump to that. Verse 25. Who, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator? That's where you get this one. This article it says the Muk uh, Allah, their sun god, was losing strength, and same high in the Lord of Death was overpowering him. They, you, they changed the truth. These nations changed the truth of God into a lie, and we willingly follow after it. That's why we have, we here to tell you, you got to stop following after these wicked customs that's set up by these nations, because it's not. You never, the black community is never going to be fixed if, as long as you continue to follow after these wicked customs. Halloween has nothing to do with us, never has, never will. You're not going to conform a w wickedness to bring it into the to, to line with the Bible. It's not going to happen. You have to bring come in line with the Bible 
for the wickedness to cease in your neighborhood. And celebrating Halloween, you're never going to see it. Let's go back to the article. Further, they believe that on October 31st, Samhain assembled the spirits of all who had died during the previous year. These spirits have been confined to inhabit animals' bodies for the past year as punishment for their evil deeds. They were allowed to return to their former home to visit the living on the eve, October 31st, of the Feast of Samhain. Druid priests led the people in diabolical worship ceremonies in which horses, cats, black sheep, oxen, human beings, and other offerings were rounded up, stuffed into wicker cages, and burned to death. This was done to appease the Samhain and keep spirits from harming them. It is clear to see that Halloween has always been a celebration of death. It's a celebration of death. So how are you, how, how you, you say you're a Christian, you claim to serve a living God, but you following after a holiday that's a, that's a celebration of death. What sense does that make? It makes no sense. That's why we tell you, you got to come, you got to come up out of the customs of this world. You got to come up out of the philosophies of this world because they are not after Christ. They are not after the God of the Bible. Get uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 15. Get Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 15. You have to understand that it ain't fun and games. The crazy thing about it is if you keep the commandments, if you celebrate the holidays that the Most High God gave us, you're going to have fun. You're going to have more fun than you actually have celebrating these wicked holidays. But you don't know it. You refuse to see it. You, you, you listen to your pastor to tell you, oh, you ain't got to do the, 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 the Old Testament. You listen to, to, to uh, Creflo make a dollar tell you that the uh, keeping the law is sin. That's foolishness. How, how is keeping the law sin when the, when the Bible say in 1 first, in first John that the way it say the, uh, I'm mixing the scriptures up, it say that sin is the transgression of the law. The law was contained in the Old Testament. And the New Testament is just an abbreviated version of the Old Testament, saying the same thing in different ways. But you listen to your pastor to tell you that you ain't gotta keep the you ain't gotta keep the old covenant, and, and they attribute it to the laws. When the laws direct us not to kill your brother, not to hate your brother, not to steal, all of these things. But read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter thirty-two, in verse fifteen. But Jeshurun waxed fat. Jeshurun is referring to the Israelites, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It says, Jeshurun waxed fat. What that mean? You got arrogant. You got prideful. You got proud. Thought you was, thought you, the thing, we, we thought we got to a point that we thought that the blessings that the Most High God gave us, we, we thought in our mind that we did something to get it. We waxed fat. We got arrogant. Read. And kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art, thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. You've grown full of yourself. You think too highly of yourself. Read. Then he forsook God, which made him. And when we got, that, we got to that point, oh, I don't need God. I could do this myself. I could make this money myself. I could make this, this land um, uh, yield this increase myself. I could do these things myself. Oh, I took over this land. I overcame this people, and we forsook God. Read. And lightly esteemed the rock of his, of his salvation. And we lightly esteemed Christ. Read. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. And that's the same thing. This is, it's, 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 it's crazy because we're reading this out of Deuteronomy. We in 2021. And this is the same spirit that our people, that you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans got on you today. This is the same spirit. You are provoking your Lord to jealousy. You're provoking God to jealousy with strange gods. You're following after Halloween. You're following after uh, white Jesus. You, you, you're following after Christmas in, in the belief that it's about Christ. When Christmas ain't got nothing to do with Christ. Read. They sacrificed unto devil. Wait, then wait. I'm, I'm going to go back, go back. It says, with abominations provoke they him to anger. We provoke God to anger 
by the abomination of Halloween. We provoke God to anger. And what does that mean? We provoke God to anger. Exodus 15 and 3, we're not going to go there. We're going to go to, I want to go to uh, actually the same chapter. It says, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. So we provoke God to anger. Let's just, so if, if I have a son, my son, I tell him, I give my son some instruction, and he provoked me to anger, what's going to happen? He's going to get disciplined. He's going to get punishment. So it says, with abominations, we provoke God to anger. Jump to verse 39. Verse 39. Because we, the, 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 remember, the, 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 um, what we're dealing with, the subtitle of the, the, the we're dealing with Halloween, but the subtitle was Fixing the Broken Black Community. Fixing the Broken Black Community. Coming out of Halloween. Read that. Verse 39. See, now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. There's no God but the Most High God that created the earth, that created the, the sun, moon, stars, and us, and chose us to be his special people. He says, there's no God but him. Read. I kill. And I make alive. He says, I kill and I make alive. Read. I wound and I heal. Uh huh. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. You might ask, why, why, would, why would he go there? Why are you reading that for? Because we fix, if we fix in a broken black community, what goes on in the black community? Mass murders, we shooting each other down in the streets, we killing each other. There's always something happening. Well, you got innocent bystanders as, as children, three-month-old, six-years-old, teenagers, everybody getting shot up. It's always violence. <clears throat> it's always violence going on in our community. Excuse me. It's, it's always a level of violence going on in our community. So we just read in 16, it says, we provoke God to anger with our abominations. And then you go to verse 39, it says, God says, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. <clears throat> Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Hmm. So that means the murders and the killings that's going on in the community, it's the most high God. Right. It's the most high God. That's judgment. It's judgment. Why are we called the minority, but all the violence supposedly go on in our community? Because the most high is judging us. That's us living at the curses. We provoked him to anger, and the, the, the result is death. So fixing the broken, you got to come out of you serving other gods by celebrating Halloween. Read on back. Go jump back up to 17. You Verse know, 17. You want, you want to bring out something? Read Verse on. 17. They sacrificed unto devils and not to God. You celebrating Halloween, you got your kids dressing up as warlocks and, and witches and all of that. You're sacrificing unto devils. You're you committing your children to devils, to Samehind, the Lord of death. That's what you're doing. You don't even realize it, but that's what you're doing. Read. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. When you, that, when you look, look in the Bible, go to your uh, Bible app and type in Halloween. You're going to get no result because it ain't in there. This is something that's newly come up. This is not our custom. Read. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. We have forgotten the God that formed us, that made us, and set us to be the head, the, the, the leaders of the world. But yet, we now we are in captivity. We the tail. We the lowest of the world. Why? Because we forgot our God. We forgot the rock that begat us. We are unmindful of our God. And when, when we bring you the truth and tell you about yourself, what happens? Oh, no, we ain't got to do that. No, you, 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 you got a bad, uh, what they say, hermeneutics. You right. got a bad exegesis of the Bible. No, you have a bad exegesis of the Bible. Right. What we what we saying is, is in, in, in uh, what is it? Because it, exegesis means you reading it in context. No, you're reading it out of context because you're attributing it to everybody in all the world. You're saying that we ain't got to keep the commandments. When the Bible over and over and over lets us know that we got to keep the commandments. Read on. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. Uh -huh. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation. 
children in whom is no faith. So the, that's this, what the Most High God. This is this is this is the tough love that that you would see. This is what He said. I I will hide my face from them. So He said, okay. So they proud. They arrogant. They think they can do. They think they can do this without me. All right, I'm gonna hide my face. I'm gonna let them. I'm gonna let them do what they do and see what they end gonna be. And what has our end been? Murder in the streets. All the streets that all of we all the ghettos and the hoods and all of that that we live in. What we doing? Warring against one another. Gang wars and this person shoot this person. Now you want to shoot, have revenge. This, this is what's happening. This is what happened when we took control because we thought that we can handle it. What you got? And, and, and you know what? Our, our people, we are a spiritual people. We, we, we always know in our minds that there is a God. And in fixing the black, the broken black community, we have to understand that when Christ said, look, I've come not to destroy the law or the prophets, we done been reading the New Testament that God is against Halloween. Now we're reading in the law that God is against Halloween, which is idolatry, spiritual whoredom. Now we're going to get something out of the prophet. Give me the book of Hosea real quick. Um, go to chapter 4, because what we read in Deuteronomy 32, the prophet Hosea said the exact same thing in Hosea. Go to chapter, chapter 4, start at verse 10 for me real quick. The book of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 10. For they shall eat and not have enough. Uh -huh. They shall commit whoredom. They shall commit whoredom, read. And shall not increase uh -huh. because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Read. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. So whoredom and this new wine is taken away from our understanding of God, and God is not dealing with us no more. When we go into Halloween, when we go into these idolatrous practice, when we go into spiritual whoredom, God is not dealing with us. That's why death comes. That's why captivity comes. That's why black-on-black -black crime is rampant. That's why our kids are ruling over our communities and terrorizing us. Read on. My people ask counsel at their stocks, mm -hmm. and their staff declareth unto them. Read. For the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err. See that? So Halloween is causing us to err. When we go into these idolatrous practices, this is what's causing us to err. This is what's causing us to what keep falling into the judgment of God, us being killed on the streets at an alarming rate. And guess what? The hand of God is behind that. Read on. And they have gone a whoring from under their God. And that's what the 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 premise of this whole thing is. We have we have strayed and went a whoring from God. God is our God, but when we want to go to these idolatrous practices, we are now what cheating on God. We are forsaking God, so now God has to bring forth judgment. Jump to chapter uh, 5, read verse 4. The, chapter 5 and verse 4. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God. Uh -huh. For the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them, and they have not known the so, Lord. as long as we keep rolling in the spirit of idolatry, the spirit of whoredom, we're never going to know God. So that's one of the reasons why we're coming with these scriptures to get your mind back to the mindset of keeping these laws, back to our true religion, which is keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Go ahead, officer. So that's and then, and then one thing you have to understand. Don't don't get stiff-necked, because we are stiff-necked people. We hear this, we hear the word, and we're like, you're going you're, you're gonna to speak against me having fun with my kid? You're going to speak against, I, I bought all this candy already. What am I supposed to do with it? Throw it out. That's what you're supposed to do with it. Throw it out. And, and, when, and when the day come, turn your porch light off. That's how you keep people from coming to your door. If you live in a house, turn your porch light off. And them kids, them kids, they're going to walk right past. They ain't going to come. Because when your porch light is on, it's a signal for those that know. I don't know if the new age, they probably don't know that. But when your porch light is off, the people know to keep walking, that, you, that you're not participating in that. And even if that's the case, put a sign on your door. Put a note on your door. No candy here. <laughs> That, that's all it take. Because what we're bringing out, we're not bringing it out just for so it can sound good, feel good message. We're bringing it out so that you can stop your evil so that the Most High will actually start hearing your prayers. Because he's not hearing your prayers. You want to say something? So can I, hey, Tessney, can I ask something? We're gonna can do, you? After you, we're going to take, take a break after, oh, okay. uh, after you bring out what you're going to bring out. Um, can you get Jeremiah 2 and 33? I just want to add to what officer saying. Um, a lot of you parents, y'all say, well, it's for the children, right? And you know it's wrong, but you say it's for the children. So read the scripture according to the Bible, what the Bible say about that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 33. Read that. 
Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. Read that again. Why trimmest thou thy ways to seek love? Stop. Because a lot of you parents know it's wrong to celebrate Halloween, but you will still do it, and you are trying to use it because saying it's your children. You're doing it to make your children happy. The Bible says, why trim that way? If you know it's wrong, why are you doing it? Read on. Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. Because you also teaching them that this is wrong. You teaching them this is okay to celebrate Halloween. You are molding your children to celebrate the dead. But in the same time, you come from church Sunday, and then you will leave from church and go take your children trick-or-treating, and you are worshiping the dead. So we got to repent from that mind state, man. You cannot you cannot trim your ways for your children and worship in the dead and you call yourself believing God. So with that last thought, I'm going to break. The vibes in the area. Well, well, man, I fight up from the start. I mean, no carry grudging on the art. Hatred make you turn from your people. Wise up, I feel be smart. DJ, turn up the lights on the start. Ring tune, pull it up, celebrate us. We no carry grudging on the art. Mm -hmm. We no carry grudging on the art. Everybody feel right, right. Good vibes in the place all night. Cause we don't carry grudge, we people We not have time for your study, no evil Don't make them catch up with the bad energy Smiling on your face, but me, I tell like them my enemy How many times you try to cure them? I be cut them off, that's the only remedy Everybody go through things We not perfect, so we not do the blame game thing Know this, try us gonna come one day I be endure, adapt me and sing any function must clean, then step out, peel out, jump in a car, tire, screech out, screech out, GPS it up, we put in the route, dream team, touch the scene, everybody scream out. Wait up, turn up the lights on the start, ring tune, pull it up, celebrate cars. We no carry grudging on the hand, mm, we no carry grudging on the hand, DJ. Turn up the lights on the start, ring tune, pull it up, celebrate cars. We no carry grudging on the hand. This near them, pass the call last, give me the rip. A long time I don't tell us that they will all them off here. Them can't hold me down, cause it's a party night. Good vibes in the air, don't have me feeling right. But about no hypocrite, but about no parasite. Them not show themselves for day, but them come out of mind. Them a vampire, I run from the light. Them just remember every day, them spirit no right. Them a combine evil, too much out of time. But what for ever in a dark coffee coming on? Turn up the lights on the start. Ring tune, pull it up, celebrate cars. We no carry God in the arm. Mm, we no carry God in the arm. DJ, turn up the lights on the start. Ring tune, pull it up, celebrate cars. We no carry God in the arm. Mm, we no carry God in the arm. No, them not really smiling at me, face me realize. Just give me this empty, me see they might be spiritualized. It's still like enduring at this struggle when the pressure rise. Man, I feel so lean at the giddy. Stay alive, no sweat and tears, end your self sacrifice. Still not give up, can make my rest funny price. Now just give me strength for your back of my enemies. Them full of hatred, them full of jealousy. I'm true to the thing, we not fake, we not counterfeit. I know for them what they mean, what them full of shit. Be perfect, Israel never quit. Have to be heard in the fire, so me tell you this. And show to the thing we not fake, we not counterfeit. I know for them what they mean, what them full of full of Be perfect, Israel never quit. Have to be heard in the fire, so me tell you this. Turn up the lights on the start. Ring tune, pull it up, celebrate cars. We not carry God in the arm. We not carry God in the arm. DJ, turn up the lights on the start. Ring tune, pull it up, celebrate cars. We no carry God in the arm. Mm, we no carry God in the arm.
He put in the work. Mission Nathaniel, yeah, he a prophet sent back to the earth. Back to the earth. He sent you to wake up the people and tell them, come out of the church. Come out of the church. He ready for war. I mean, they want to get out of the dirt. Out of the dirt. Hey. Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Tuesday. Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Tuesday. Got the juice, I ain't talking no blue late. Cause we walk in the light of a new day. I can't listen to nothing a fool say. Thank the Lord that he showed us a new way. Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Tuesday. Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Tuesday. Got the juice, I ain't talking no blue late. Cause we walk in the light of a new day. I can't listen to nothing a fool say. Thank the Lord that he showed us a new way. Shout out, yes, Tuesday. Bow down, it's your doomsday. It's a fool's day, but that's what you think. Because we preaching the faith that's a do the nation. Yeah, we booming patience and removing hatred. No more fornication, get the Lord's glory. Because we more than faithful and prepare the place for our coronation. Yeah, that's truth, it's true illumination. Cause you're just by moving through. The word of God is like he murdered guys. Tell them hush, puppy, little poodle move. Shut up, wag your tongue, got a son of God. Fly flying like I threw the goose. Christians out they mind, they the flew the coops. When the sword that you watch, your noodles ooze. Holes in your doctrine, size a hula hoop. We got a king and a king and a come. Saving us all by the speech of the tongue. Bring us the news of his rule, let us move. How you Move in the word, how the faith is won. So Tuesday, tune in the bitch shop for the cuts and the shops still get built up. You miss this, you can get the repeat on IUIC events. I am yo, I've been so named to shout the praise to the heavenly father for your holy ghost. Living and breathing among us so awesome. We was once asleep, now we woke, no longer grow. We can see clear was a mirror, the fear with the nose. Not a foe, they call us bougie, cause we kick script like Luke Kane. Shout out Tuesday. He put in the work. Mr. Nathaniel, yeah, he a prophet sent back to the earth, back to the earth. He sent you to wake up the people and tell them, come out of the church, come out of the church. He ready for war, as soon as they run up, get out of the dirt, out of the dirt. Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Tuesday. Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Tuesday. Got the juice, I ain't talking no blue late. Cause we walk in the light of a new day. I can't listen to nothing a fool say. Thank the Lord that he showed us a new way. Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Tuesday. Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Shout out, what? Tuesday. Got the juice, I ain't talking no blue late. Cause we walk in the light of a new day. I can't listen to nothing a fool say. Thank the Lord that he showed us a new way. that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You'll leave me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what y'all do. <laughs> Didn't have to class Yeah, I knew what you were talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. What the hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again. Shalom, shalom. We back, we back, we back, we back after listening to those, the, the righteous sounds of Israel. So we back listening live to prophesying to the wind reloaded. We, as you remember, we're going over fixing a broken black community. We touching on Halloween. We touching on Halloween. So before we move forward, what you wanted to bring out, soldier? Yes, sir. Hey, soldier, really quick. You'll give me uh, Leviticus 18 and 2. Uh, going back to the article. Notice when it said um, that it was an honor of worshiping the dead. Let me show you something that nothing is new under the sun. These are things that was previously practiced by the heathen. I'm going to show you this. Watch this. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 2. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel Come on. and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Uh -huh. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwell, uh -huh. shall ye not do. So whenever we were in the land masses of the heathen or in captivity of the heathen, we always learned their customs. So God is telling us the practices of at this time of the Egyptians do not do. Today, the practices of the Americans or the Europeans, we are also to not do. Read on. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Also, the ordinances of the land of Canaan shall ye not do. Read on. Neither shall ye walk in, the or in their ordinances. In their what? In their ordinances. Because guess what? They had customs as well. Remember, the officer brought out Colossians 2 and 8, talking about the princi principles or the rudiments of the world. Now, really quick, we're going to uh, read one. Give me Leviticus 19 and 28. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 28. Come on. Ye shall not make cuttings. 
make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Do what? Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. So guess what? Back during this time in the land of Canaan, they had a custom or ordinance where they would actually make cuttings in their flesh in honor of the dead. Now, obviously, back then it wasn't Halloween, but you got to bring it up to today. The Lord said, do not do that. So just how people try to dress their children up or dress themselves up and, or paint their faces or dress themselves up as murderers or hung, whoremongers or anything is actually in honor of the dead. And God said, do not do it. Is that it on that? Nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Uh, last scripture, Ecclesiastes 11 and 9. Because some of us like to go back and say, well, it's harmless fun, just like we read in the article. We do it for the children. It's more for the kids so they can have fun. No, that's not so. And watch what the Lord had to say for you trying to do things for the children. Or for yourselves if you think it's just harmless fun. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9. Uh -huh. Rejoice. Oh, young man. So if you want to be stubborn and not apply the commandments of God, the Lord says, go ahead, rejoice, young man. And thy youth, uh -huh. and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. Let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Go ahead, do whatever you want. Do whatever your soul desire. Go ahead. Walk in the ways of thine heart, uh -huh. and in thy sight of thine eye. Uh -huh. But know thou. But know thou. For come all, on. For all these things. God will bring thee into judgment. So it don't matter whether you feel like it's something good or that it's harmless fun. God said, know thou that he will bring you into judgment. Because he told you not to celebrate Halloween. He told you not to do the ordinance of the ways of the heathen and the land and honoring of the, and honoring of the dead. But if you choose to go upon your own understanding and do otherwise, he said, I will judge you. Read on. Therefore. Therefore. Re remove sorrow far from thy heart. Uh-huh. And put away evil from thy flesh. So it's best to repent now and remove the evil from your flesh. Repent. Stop celebrating Halloween. Come on. For childhood and youth are vanity. For childhood and youth are vanity. Don't deceive yourself. All oh, is for the kids. All oh, is harm harmless fun. God don't care about your fun. He cares about you abiding by his laws, his ordinance. Go ahead, officer. And that's a, that's an excellent point. Good Proverbs chapter twenty two and verse six because <clears throat> the 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 evil in there you are saying is oh it's just for the kids. What you gonna be? What you gonna do? What you gonna be instilling in your children is that they gonna continue the same pattern of evil. They are gonna continue the same pattern of evil that you showed them. Oh, it's just for the kids. Even though it's evil and wicked, ain't got nothing to do with God. You gonna you gonna go to church on Sunday. Run around the church and learn and learn nothing and celebrate Halloween and then you passing that same spirit on to your children. That's not of the most high. Read it, read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 26. Verse 6. Verse 6, excuse me. Verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. The way that our children are supposed to go is by is applying the commandments, doing what the commandments say to do. But by you celebrating Halloween and saying, oh, it's for the kids and this, that, and the third, your kids are going to grow up, they're going to have kids, and they're going to pass that same wicked tradition down to their children. They're going to pass that same abomination to their children. And what's, what's going to happen? The end result is when God, when the most high God, when Christ come, when the black Messiah come and crack that sky, you're going to be put to death. Your grandma going to be put to death because she passed it to you. You're going to be put to death. Then your children are going to be put to death. Right. Why are you setting your children up to be put to death by the most high God? Because right. it's real. It's happening. The prophecies are going to come to pass. We've seen them come to pass. The Bible said that we was going to go into slavery on ships. What happened? You look in the history books. We went, on slave, we went into slavery on ships because we broke the commandments. So just like that prophecy came to pass, the destruction is coming to this earth. And if you're training your children up in the wickedness of this earth, they're going to gonna be reserved for punishment. You're provoking your children to wrath. You got something? Yeah, I, do. I, I got something. Um, give me the book of Ephesians because um, <clears throat> we done went throughout the whole Bible. We done showed you how to fix the broken black community throughout the whole Bible, from the Old Testament to the Apocrypha, 
uh, with the laws, with the, uh, the what the prophets were saying, and even what Christ said, and now the apostles. Read what uh, Apostle Paul is saying. Give me that in chapter 5, start at verse 7. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 7. Be not ye, therefore, partakers with them. So God is saying through Christ, through the spirit of Christ, through Paul, saying, be not ye, therefore, partakers with them. What? In Halloween. Celebrating that demonic religion. Read on. For ye were sometimes darkness, uh -huh. but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So we have to teach our children to walk as children of light, not walking in darkness. Read on. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So there's no, there's no, uh, there's no light in walking in darkness when you're celebrating Halloween. So that's why he says that again. Read that in verse 9. Verse 9, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So the fruit of the Spirit is goodness and righteousness, walking as the children of light. Read on. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. So that's how you could prove what is acceptable unto the Lord. Like the officer said, you could go onto a Bible app and Google Halloween. You're not going to find it in the Bible. You're not going to find it. Read on. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. So God is saying this. He says, has no, what? No unfruit, excuse me, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. That plainly says, look, stop celebrating Halloween because Halloween is darkness. Is any more on that? But rather reprove them. And that's what we're doing now. We're correcting. Why? Because we're trying to fix the broken black community. Go ahead, officer. So let's go back to that article, because as the officer said, we've we given you the solutions to fix the broken black community. Because everywhere you go across the, the world, not just in America, not just in Chicago, not just in Gary, not just in Detroit, when you go across the world, wherever we are at, it, it, the, the streets are down, everything look bad, everything is downtrodden because we live in the curses, because we've turned our back on our God and he turned, we turned our back on him, he turned this back on us. That's our protection. Keeping the commandments is our protection because when we keep the commandments, the most high God is going to fight for us. He's going to be with us. But now we're too busy celebrating Halloween. So if we go back to that article, it says, which brings me to my next point. How were these sacrifices obtained? Druid priests and people would go from house to house asking for fatted calves, black sheep, and human beings. So it says they were, they were going house to house asking for fatted calves, black sheep, and human beings. What do you think those human beings was? It was your children. They was asking for your children, your daughters, your sons. Read. Those who gave were promised prosperity, and those who refused... <clears throat> Give were cursed and threatened. In addition, it was likely that all of the wandering spirits would get hungry. If you set out a treat for them, they would not trick or curse you. Hence, we have the origin of trick or treat. So this is the origin of trick or treat. This is the origin of trick or treat. The trick or curse was if you decided not to give them a sacrifice, they will curse you. The treat was where say the treat was those who gave who gave were promised prosperity and those who refused to give were cursed and threatened. That's trick or treat right there in that in that little sentence. Those who gave, that's the treat. They're gonna promise you prosperity. But if you didn't give, you that's the trick. Read on. Trick or treat is a reenactment of the druidic practices. The candy has replaced the human sacrifices of old. But it is still an appeasement of those deceptive evil spirits. Read that part again, because our people don't understand that. They think, oh, it's just for the kids. It's harmless fun. Read that part again. Trick or treat is a reenactment of the druidic practices. The candy has replaced the human sacrifices of old. But it is still an appeasement of those deceptive evil spirits. How, like we read earlier in Colossians 2 and 8. Halloween is a vain deceit. It's a deceptive, evil spirit, a deceptive lie. It's a vain deceit. You have to come up out of it. Get Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 10. Because you got you to realize that 
just because in in your mind you're thinking, oh, I'm not doing that. I'm not sacrificing my daughter and my son. And yes, you are. You worshiping a false god. You walk worshiping the god of uh, what? How they say it? Saw Sawin, which is pronounced to us Samhain. But you that when you go out there trick or treat and you got your kids dressing up in these costumes, you're worshiping the devil, the Lord of Death. That's what you're doing. You could believe it or not, but that's what you're doing. We're telling you. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18 and verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Or, or, this right here, it says, it should not be found any one of us that make his son or daughter to pass through the fire. That's what it's talking about in here, the sacrifice, the human beings being sacrificed. Them sacrifices was your sons and your daughters, your virgin daughters. That's what it was. Read. Or that useth divination. Uh-huh. Or an observer of times. Or an enchanter or a witch. So all these things go against the Bible. But yet, Halloween, you got your children dressing up as warlocks, as uh, um, soothsayers. All of this is against the God of the Bible. You're an observer of times. You're looking at these horoscopes and uh, the, the Aquarius and the Virgo and all of this. You're an observer. To, this is against the Bible. This is God's laws. It says, or an enchanter or a witch. Read. Or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits. A, a consulter of familiar spirits. Another, another um, thing, you got Halloween and then you got the Day of the Dead. The Day of the Dead, mostly our uh, Mexican brothers and sisters celebrate the Day of the Dead. What they, they call it Dia de los Muertos, Muertos, something like that. I don't speak Spanish. I'm an English speaker. But that's what it's, they, the Day of the Dead, in which they had a movie. I can't think of the movie. It's like a little kid movie um, where the whole movie is about the, the, the son, the, what the son, he, um, he passed out or something with dad partially or something and he went he went to and he'd seen his grandmother that had just died or something like that can't think of the name i think the name of the movie might be dead or dead but it's, it's a kid movie where it basically the whole movie is about him dying and going to, to see his uh his grandmother that had, that had just passed and it was on the day of the dead where the, the, his parents are they having parties and all of that about the day of the dead nevertheless but the familiar spirits is a consultant with familiar spirits. Coco, yeah, that's Coco. it. Coco, Coco, that's the that's the name of it. Basically, it's, it's it's that's what it's about. You got the summary of that? Yes. It read, says, the, read the summary of the movie. So this is the summary of the movie Coco. The concept for Coco is inspired by the Mexican holiday Day of the Dead. The film was scripted by Molina and Matthew Aldrich from a story by Uncrick, Jason Kratz. Aldrich and Molina. Pixar began developing the animation in 2016. Uncritch and some of the film's crew visited Mexico for the research. So the, the movie is about the Day of the Dead, and that's what that's been. I, I gave a bad rendition of it. I, ain't, I don't think I ever watched it completely from beginning to end, but that's the gist of the movie. It's, it's about the Day of the Dead. You got to say something else on yes, that? Yes, sir. It Read. says, the story follows a 12-year-old boy named Miguel who is accidentally transported to the land of the dead, where he seeks the help of his deceased musician great grand great great grandfather to return him to his family among the living and to reverse his family's ban on music. And this is and this is actually um that's what you was just reading the same uh, thing. Yeah, that's the Wikipedia. It right there. Yep. And the, the thing about it is we just read that in the article. Yep. They say that they say that October 31st is when the portal between the, the dead spirits is open, and then you got to go into November 1st and all of that. That's idolatry. That's, uh, what is what it say? That's a consulter with familiar spirits. Because I, I don't think we read it yet, but it talked about how they set food out to appease the spirits. Go ahead. In this article uh, where it says, those who gave were promised prosperity, and those who refused to give were cursed with threatening. In addition, oh, yeah, it was likely that 
all of the wandering spirits will get hungry. And that's exactly what that movie would talk about, what yep. we just read. Hey, I'll pray some most high for bringing that out, soldier. So the, the so back to the script says in uh, Deuteronomy 18 and 11, it says a charmer or a consulter. Yeah, read that. Verse 11, or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. And this, let, this also lets you know that some of those people that that call themselves uh, um, I forget the name they use today. Medium, you got a medium and things like that. Some of those, some of them is actually real. They actually legit. They actually bring up, <laughs> bring spirits, because we and we're not gonna go there. But there's an example of that in uh set in First Samuel 28, where Saul went, disguised himself and went to the uh f the lady that did familiar spirits. Then he summoned the spirit of Samuel, and Samuel told, him, "Why did you disturb me?" So that's what you're doing when you celebrating Halloween. That's what you're doing when you're celebrating Halloween. You got to come up out of that. It's, this is it, you breaking the commandments. Let's finish that up in Deuteronomy. Verse 12, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. He says, the most, so the most high God would, he, it's just like he trade, uh, sorry. In verse 9, we didn't read verse 9, but in 9 it says, When thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. When the Most High God was bringing us into the land, he was bringing us into the land of Canaan, and that's what they were doing. So he was saying, he was telling us that the things that they were doing in the land, don't do it because that's why I'm driving them up out of there. It's your land. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it back to you, but the things that they are doing, they sins have reached up to me, and I'm kicking them out. And the same thing that happened to us. That's why we in the, ain't in our land today. We don't know who we are. We don't know that we're from Israel. We don't know that that's our land because we have been driven out because of our abominations. The Most High drove us out of the land because of our abominations and our wickedness. That's why we continue to see evil in our community. Read verse 13. Verse 13. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Read that again, because a lot of our people in Christianity, ain't nobody perfect. You can't be perfect. Read that again. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. The Most High God ain't going to tell us to do something that we ain't able to do. He said, be perfect with the Lord thy God. Now, that don't mean that you never, you never going to make a mistake. What it means is that you're going to be, if you make a mistake, you're going you to acknowledge your mistake, and you're going to correct it. Be diligent. You're going to be diligent. You're not going to give up. You're not going to make a mistake and be like, oh, I messed up. I might as well just keep sinning. I might as well just keep celebrating. How? No. You, you have remorse. You feel you have a godly sorrow. You messed up. That's what David did. That's why David was called a man after God's own heart. Because when he messed up, he repented. Uh, read 14. I know you, you got something you want to bring out. Read verse 14. Verse 14. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times. And unto diviners, but as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. So, what he's saying is, the uh, I think we read it in Deuteronomy thirty-two, or it, I don't think we read it, but it's a script. When you look at Psalms ninety-six and five, mm -hmm. it said the gods of the nations are idols. Right. The all of these things, I think it's Deuteronomy four, where it talk about yeah. the sun, moon, and stars was created for the nations to yeah. to pay homage and worship it. But not us. And when you celebrating Halloween, that's what you're doing. You're paying homage to a God that's not a God. No, not even realizing it. What you want to bring out? Uh, when you read in uh, Deuteronomy 18, 13, it says, "Thou shalt be uh, perfect with thy God." So that's that's a that's a solution. You know, some of you are listening to this now, and you're like, "Oh my God, I got Halloween stuff in the house." So what is the solution? This is what you should do with it. Go to uh, in the same book, go to chapter 7, verse 25. Here's a solution. This is how you could be perfect with God now. But with this, with this solution here, this is what you should do right now at the sound of these scriptures. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 25. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. So you got a Halloween outfit for your child. You got one for yourself. You should do what? Burn with fire. You should burn that thing with fire. Read on. 
Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that's that talk, is on them. That's talking about that candy. Don't even desire the candy. Mm. Burn that too. <laughs> Your favorite Tootsie Rolls, whatever candy that you collected going from house to house trick-or-treating, burn that as well. Read on. Uh, nor take it unto thee, uh -huh. lest thou be snared therein. Lest you be what? Trapped back into that idolatrous thought process. Read. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. So that's why you should get rid of it. That's why you should now want to be perfect. Here's a solution. Because it's an abomination. Go ahead, Austin. All right. Go ahead. If Go I can get one, one more script. So, because just in case some of you might think, well, that's just the Old Testament. God changed. No, it's in the New Testament too. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. When, when Christ was on the earth, he never taught his own doctrine. He always taught the commandments of God. Remember, right. when during that time, there was no such thing as a New Testament. So what book or what doctrine was Christ coming out of? The Old Testament. Let's read it. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 48. Uh -huh. Be ye, therefore, perfect. What did Christ say? Be ye, therefore, perfect. J just like we read in Deuteronomy 18. The Lord said, be ye, therefore, perfect. Come on. Even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So keep the commandments and put away that idolatrous holiday or unholy day, Halloween. Go ahead, Elsa. All right, so go back to the article. We're going to finish up this, this section of the article. Um, then we're going we're gonna to wrap up in a little bit. But we're going to finish this, finish this part of the article out. The traditional mm -hmm. response to those who do not treat is to have Where a... Where you at? Uh, Right here at the, the stuff. Okay, okay, go ahead. The traditional response to those who do not treat is to have a trick played on them. On them. When you give out Halloween candy, you are, in essence, providing a sacrifice to false gods. You are participating in idolatry, says the former high priest of Wicca, Tom Sangunit. Who's casting, who, who, who's casting his tongue upon their own head. <laughs> Read. Did you know that even the jack-o'-lantern has its origin with these pagan practices? Get rid of them pumpkins. Stop cutting holes in them with the face and all of that. Putting a candle in it because what you're doing is pay it's a pagan practice. Read. In the book Occult Conceit, the author says on page 190, the candlelit pumpkin or skull served as a signal to mark those farms and homes that were sympathetic to the Satanists and thus deserving of mercy when the terror, trick-or-treat, of the night began, began. Further, an old edition of the World Book Encyclopedia says, the apparently harmless lighted pumpkin face of the jack-o'-lantern is an ancient symbol of a damned soul. So while you, you, you going on aimlessly, some of you ignorantly, some of you know, but you you going on aimlessly celebrating Halloween, you are in full idolatry. You are full in the pagan practice. Everything about Halloween is pagan and it's idolatry. You have to you have to recognize and know that. Uh, pull up them pull up them images. Pull up them images. Because uh, we read earlier the definition of rudiment, and then if if you have a, depending on the Bible you have. And another a, a synonym for rudiment, uh, when you look in Colossians chapter 2 and 8, a synonym for it is elements, an element of this world. An element of this world is Halloween, and it, where it says those jack-o'-lantern, it says uh, the apparently harmless lighted pumpkin face of the jack-o'-lantern is an ancient symbol of a damned soul. You got the images the, uh, that's in the uh, telegram. This is this is mockery to to the to the fullest extent. Damn! Wow. Hey, that is a damn soul, though. You pull you pulling it up, and they see it. So this, you see this, and what what the, the it says? It's an ancient symbol of a damned soul. That's a damned soul right there, cause that ain't Jesus. Right. That's <laughs> a damned soul, because that's the mark. That's a um the image of the image beast. of the beast. That's the image of the beast. It's a damn soul. That's your jack o' lantern. That's ex that, that, that's exactly that's your jack o' lantern. So uh, read on in that article. It says, "Where we at? 
Further, an old edition of the world's book encyclopedia says the apparently harmless lighted pumpkin face of the jack-o'-lantern is an ancient symbol of a damned soul. What about costumes? They originated with these terrible druid death rites also, as people and animals were screeching in agony while being burned to death. The observer would dress in costumes made of animal skins and heads. So you got your children dressing up. You're you're paying homage to the Druid death rites when they were sacrificing your children and, and being dressed in animal skins and heads. This is what you was doing. This is what you are doing today, not even realizing it. Read. They would dance chant and jump through the flames in hope, warding off, warding off the evil spirits. It is obvious that Halloween is a pagan day rooted in the worst kind of pagan rituals and worship. The Bible urges Christians to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. And that's what, that's what uh, the officer brought out earlier. Ephesians 5 have, no, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works, unfruitful works of darkness. Uh, darkness. Halloween is a fruitful, is an unfruitful work of darkness. Read. Through Halloween is diluted somewhat. Though, yeah, through Halloween. Is, supposed, I think that's supposed though. to say though. Though Halloween is diluted somewhat, there is obviously nothing Christ honoring about the day. And it's, it's crazy that they say that. It says through Halloween, though Halloween is diluted somewhat. When you look up, when you, like, this is, this is a rare article. When you look up, you try to look up Halloween. They water it down, try to make everything, try to make it look innocent. They water it down. They water it down. That's just ain't no other way to say it. But they water it down and make it try to try to make it seem not that bad. Right. Like it's just fun. When you look at many of the articles, you look on Wikipedia, they try to they try to sugarcoat it. But it's evil. Read on. It is a pagan sacrifice day, and the Bible warns Christians. The things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not, and I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. First Corinthians ten and twenty. Halloween is the devil's day. So we're not gonna read. You could you could pull up this article on your own and read the rest of it. It's the title of it is Dark Side, the Dark Side of Halloween. But the whole aim and goal of us bringing this out is to get you to recognize and realize that you got to come out of those customs. You got to come out of those ways. Get Acts chapter 3 and 19. The, the, whole, the, whole, we, the whole aim of us bringing this information out to you, remember, we said fixing a broken black community. How do you fix the broken black community? This is how you fix the broken black community. Acts chapter 3 and 19. This is the book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Start at 18. Verse 18. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. So this lets you know that Christ, the purpose of Christ, the black Messiah, Christ was a black man. Not that uh, white image you see. That's the image of the beast. But Christ, as described in Revelation 1 and 14 and Daniel 10, verse 5 and 6, Christ was a black man. And the black Messiah says... Those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Christ was a sacrifice for the nation of Israel to bring us back to the Most High God. Read on. Verse 19. Repent ye therefore. Repent ye therefore. Meaning have godly sorrow for your wrongdoing. Have godly sorrow for celebrating Halloween. And turn away from it. Repent. Change. Read. And be converted. And be converted. How are we converted? How are you well, converted is a, another another word for converted is changed. So repent. Feel remorse for your wrongdoing. Feel remorse for you celebrating Halloween, going to the Christian Christianity church. Feel remorse for those things. Have a godly sorrow. Recognize that you've been disappointing your God. And it says, and be converted. Be changed. So when you had that godly sorrow, now you have to change. What, is, what does it say? It says, and be converted. Read that in Psalms 19. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. It says the law of the Lord is perfect. You're not going to find no flaws in the laws of God. 
It's perfect. Read. Converting the soul. Converting the soul. So it's the laws of God that's convert that's going to convert your soul. So when it says be converted, you have to apply the commandments. You got to study the laws and apply them. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. And when we go and we look through the testimonies and we apply those things, even as we look through our forefathers, the things that they 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 uh messed up on, you don't do those same things. It says the testimony of the Lord is sure. The prophecy is going to come to pass, whether you believe it or not. So be converted. So read back in Acts chapter 3 and 19. Acts 3 and 19. Repent ye therefore. Feel remorse for your sins. Feel remorse for celebrating Halloween. Be remorseful. Have a godly sorrow. Read. And be converted. Be that changed. Stop celebrating Halloween. Apply the commandments. Read Leviticus 23 and find out what the... Holy days that the Most High God gave us to uh, celebrate. Read. That your sins may be blotted out. That your sins may be forgiven. You have to do these things, and it's action behind it. You have to apply the commandments. Your sins will be blotted out. You'll be forgiven for your sins. The Most High will have mercy on you. Read. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And those times of refreshing is when the Most High God does judge these nations. If you have repented and started keeping his commandments, you're going to witness these times of refreshing. Those times of refreshing is the kingdom being restored to Israel, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. But well, we are back the head and not the tail no more. Read. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. So Christ is coming back. The black Messiah is coming back. And when he comes back, is he going to find you keeping his commandments? Or he's going to find you in the midst of celebrating Halloween and these wicked feast days, these wicked holidays, wicked hella days that our enemies have set up against us. So the whole aim and goal, fixing a broken black community. Today, you hearing these, this, this class, you heard this radio show, it's time to repent and change. Throw all that stuff out. Change your ways because the Most High God is watching. And he's not going to be pleased if he come back and you still celebrating Halloween. So with that, we're going to conclude this segment of the radio show, Fixing a Broken Black Community, Halloween. You have been listening in live to Prophesying to the Wind Reloaded. I am Officer Simakaya. I'm Officer Hosea. Soldier Judah. Soldier Gabriel. Most High in Christ bless. Most High in Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.